Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All right, so there are tons of courses out there for learning Power BI. So it can be tough to know where to start, what to learn, how to learn it, where, all that stuff. And what's even more challenging is most courses only go skin deep. I've been using Power BI for a number of years now and have even worked specifically as a Power BI developer. Because of this, I've learned what the more important aspects of the tool to focus on are. And today, I'm gonna to walk through what I would focus on if I were to learn Power BI all over again. So let's start by talking about what is Power BI. So Power BI is Microsoft's business intelligence tool. It helps you connect to your data, manage table relationships, clean your data, create interactive reports, and even automate processes. So in a lot of ways, it really is almost like an end-to-end -end reporting solution rather than just a dashboarding tool. It's incredibly powerful, and there's a lot of things under the hood that people tend to miss when they're working with Power BI. Things we're gonna go over today. Okay, so that's great, but why learn Power BI? Maybe you're brand new to the tool and you wanna know why you should invest the time. So one big reason is Power BI is one of the most in-demand tools right now. It's beginner-friendly while also having a lot of really deep, advanced features. It also integrates with a lot of tools many of us are familiar. Like I mentioned, Excel, SQL, Snowflake, Power Automate. So learning Power BI can help you advance in your current role if you want to pick up a new tool, get some cool skills, and build some awesome reports, or it can help you stand apart in the job hunt if you're looking for a job because it really is an amazing tool. All right, so enough chit chat. Let's dive into what you should learn. So the first thing you're gonna wanna focus on is building a foundation. So part of that is getting familiar with the tool. The three main aspects of the tool are the report view, where you're gonna build your dashboards and reports. The table view, which is essentially Power Query, where you're gonna clean and transform your data and connect to data. And there's the model view, which is table relationships. And so you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with all three of those those aspects. Learning Power Query, which if you come from an Excel background, this one might be a little bit more intuitive to you, but I would call actually understanding how to use Power Query effectively is a little bit more intermediate. Plenty of people out there who use Excel who don't really know Power Query, but Power Query is an essential part of Power BI. When it comes to the model view, you want to understand the different types of table relationships, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many, though you won't be using that one very much. Most of the time, you'll be using a one-to-one -one or a one-to-many style relationship. And you're going to want to familiarize yourself with the star schema. There's also the snowflake schema, which you should know, but star schema is probably what you're going to use most of the time. Essentially what it is, so you have one primary table and you have tables surrounding it that are connected to that primary table with a primary key. So a common data field, like a join in SQL. That's really all it is. It's super simple, but knowing how to set it up is going to help you get a good start to creating table relationships. Power BI is going to do a lot of this automatically for you, but knowing how to build one is still very important. And then of course the report view, just learning how to put together visuals, make some cool dashboards. You really do want to get comfortable with building a lot of different reports to really understand how much you can do with the report view. And that takes me to my next point, which is report report building and optimization. So when it comes to things like data visualization, it's really easy in Power BI to just slap together some visuals, right? They make it really easy for a reason, and that's great. It makes it so that the average person can kind of get a start with it really quickly. But if you really want to learn how to take your reports further, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time learning visualization best practices. Now, I have an entire video that covers how to make really good, clean looking reports, and I'll link that video specifically for Power BI, but I'll go over at high level what those things are right now. So things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to are balance. Are you overloading your report with visuals or do you have the right amount? And are things placed in a way that follows a zigzag pattern, which is the natural pattern our eyes tend to move when we're looking at visuals. Spacing. So you wanna make sure there's adequate space in between your visuals. If you're jamming stuff together, it just reduces the readability, makes it hard to read. But when you give that, that space and that room to breathe in between visuals, it actually makes the report easier to interpret. Minimalism. So taking a look at everything in your report and asking yourself, is this totally necessary? And if it's not, then check it out. You don't need too many visuals to have a really nice report. The fourth thing I would say is functionality. You want to give users the ability to look at things at a high level and a more granular level using different slicers. So you want it to be dynamic is really what functionality comes down to. And then finally, color. So to me, color is symmetry. If you have like a sales field that appears in multiple visuals, you want that to be the same color throughout each visual. You don't want 
uh, gross sales to be like red in this visual and then blue here and green there. When they're all the same color, it kind of helps people to follow what's going on when there's symmetry between that color. So color is not arbitrary. It really does make a difference in the report. And so I would make a lot of reports and try to keep those five things in mind as you're building them. Let's move on from visuals and talk about DAX. So DAX stands for Data Analysis Expression and it's the formula language of Power BI. DAX allows you to get more out of your data by increasing the level of detail by creating new measures and columns. So spending some time time learning DAX code and how it works is going to be really helpful to you because DAX allows you to do so much more with your reports than you could do otherwise. So Power Query lets you manipulate data on the back end, but DAX is what lets you manipulate data on the front end and create new measures and columns. Which, speaking of measures and columns, you want to understand the difference between calculated columns and calculated measures. Beyond DAX is M code, which is the formula language of Power Query. So anything you do in Power Query automatically generates M code on the back end, which is the code that manipulates the data that you're playing with. So you don't really need to know that much about M code, but knowing what it is and knowing how to access it through the advanced editor, it just gives you a little bit more control when you know how to mess with the M code rather than just relying on like the steps you take on the front end of Power Query. So different ways you can connect to data are direct query, import, and then there's hybrid models. Direct query gives you live insights. So say you have like, just for example, stock price data and you need data instantly at every minute, every second, whatever it is. Direct Query connects to your data and refreshes it every time there's a change to the data. So it's very performance heavy because it's constantly refreshing data, but it's helpful when you need real-time live insights. Import mode is like a snapshot of your data. So say you only need a report refreshed once a day. Now in Power BI Service, you can create that automatic refresh to refresh every day at 7 a.m and it's gonna grab a new import and refresh that data. So most of the time, you'll probably be using import mode because you usually don't need real-time live insights, but it's important to know the difference in case you do. And sometimes you need a little bit of both, which is where hybrid models come in. It's where you can take sections of your data that are direct query and are refreshing it in real time, and then other sections of your data that you just need a snapshot of in import mode. So know that you can use either or even combine the two when you need. And another really big aspect of Power BI that I feel like a lot of courses fail to talk about more is administering the Power BI service. I remember when I stepped into my first Power BI developer role and all of a sudden I was like a Power BI admin for the entire organization and I kind of had no idea what I was doing with it. So I looked online and I found that there weren't really many courses on this material but I was able to like scrounge together some information and figure it out. And there's so much there. So understanding how to manage different levels of access, how to create workspaces and manage those workspaces. This is also where you're gonna set up things like automatic refreshes. It's not all like super advanced stuff, but there is a lot there that's like way more on the front end of Power BI that a lot of people don't really get the opportunity to learn that much. So definitely spend some time learning the Power BI service. So now let's get on to the third point, which is a little bit more advanced, and that's knowing how to automate and extend Power BI. So this is integrating Power BI into a deeper workflow to extend its capabilities. Now this is really much more on the advanced end, but it's the type of thing that's really gonna make you a power user in Power BI. So a big part of this is Power Automate. Power Automate is kind of like Microsoft's Zapier, where it's a workflow automation tool as you can connect different tools together, create automatic workflows. Now with Power Automate, you can create those workflows. You can trigger data set refreshes. And you might be asking, how does this differ from automatic refreshes in the Power BI service? And the difference is Power Automate can trigger those refreshes based on something that happens. Like say you receive a certain type of email or there's some kind of update to your database that will trigger a refresh in Power BI rather than just the static 7 a.m. refresh that we talked about earlier. With Power Automate, you can also refresh report distribution. So say you want to send this report to different stakeholders every time the data set refreshes or the report refreshes. You can create that workflow in Power Automate. You could also connect to different apps and customize the way you receive data. So a really cool example of this and something that I've built in the past was connecting a Power BI report to Microsoft Planner and 
taking that planner data and then creating a dashboard view or like a report view of that Microsoft planner data to make it a little bit easier to use and a little bit more dynamic. And Christine Payton, who's another YouTube creator, has a really fantastic video on this. You should definitely go check it out. But learning how to do this stuff is really cool because you can just create these really awesome reports and do really cool things with your reports by taking advantage of tools like Power Automate. Another thing to spend some time learning is REST APIs. So an API is an application programming interface, and it's a way for software to communicate with each other. APIs let you automate repetitive tasks, integrate tools, and customize workflows, which helps you to build some more scalable solutions. So how do you use an API? So you authenticate using a token and then send requests like refreshing a data set to an API endpoint and process the response to confirm the action or retrieve the data. And you could do this with tools like Python. So I'm not gonna get too far into REST APIs because it's a pretty big topic. And to be honest, I'm not like the most experienced with them, but it's worth understanding because you may run into some situations where an API could be helpful. The last thing we'll talk about here is using R and Python for more advanced analytics. So extending Power BI with R and Python helps you to perform more statistical analysis and create custom visuals. So you could use R for things like clustering or forecast analysis, and you can leverage Python for machine learning and making things like heat maps. But a really, really great resource for this is extending Power BI with R and Python by Luca Zavarella. And this is what the book looks like. So those are the different things I would focus on and the order I would focus on them. But now let's talk about how to learn those different concepts. So what I would do is I would try to watch videos or take courses related to each of these specific topics. You're also gonna wanna create lots of projects, whether that's for fun or finding opportunities in your work. You just wanna get really, really comfortable with taking one of these aspects, playing with it, building some cool stuff and mastering it. So I hope that video was helpful. Hopefully that gave you some clarity for how to navigate Power BI and get better at the tool. If the video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it does help the channel. And let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. But before you go, be sure to check out this video where I break down how to go from a beginner to an advanced data analyst.